Hey y'all, it's time for another Cyber and Tech in 5 minutes and today I'm going to be following up about my earlier video regarding Azure Functions. This time looking at Azure Automation. And Azure Automation is a different way to run these type of scripts. It's actually the same concept. You run serverless code without having to get an entire virtual machine to run code for you, but it just has some different approaches and some different ideas behind it. So let's jump into it because we have a lot of ground to cover. So to create an Azure Automation account, you have to look for Azure Automation in the search bar or if you already have it on your dashboard, click on it. When you create a new account, it'll also, asks, it'll also ask for a specific run as account. If you don't create that account, you'll be fairly limited in what you can do inside of Azure Resources. So I always recommend leaving this on in case you, for example, want to start, stop, create or delete VMs using this uh, Azure Automation. We've already created our test account, so we don't have to wait, so let's jump into that. When we open our test account in the sidebar, you'll see a bunch of information immediately. The runbooks are what's the actual power of the Azure Automation. The jobs are uh, specific scheduled tasks that you've ex executed, and the runbooks gallery is something we'll jump into right now, because this is also a pretty cool feature. Compared to Azure Functions, getting scripts into your Azure runbooks is a lot easier, because there's a lot of examples online. You can see that there's a couple of sources, the PowerShell Gallery and GitHub, and all of these scripts are immediately runnable inside of Azure Automation. So for example, here we have a graphical runbook called Start Azure V2 VMs. And I'll dive into what is a graphical runbook, a workflow runbook, and a PowerShell runbook in a minute. But as you can see, there's a lot of easy ways to um, create an automation immediately and just jump into getting started. You don't have to uh, create your own script, you don't have to create your own function host, this is already all prepared. So that's a cool benefit that Azure Automation has versus Azure Functions. But let's jump into our schedules now because that's also pretty important. The scheduling in here is also a little bit easier but more limited than what we have available with Azure Functions. The limitations mostly are related to not having HTTP triggers or uh, triggers on files, queues, and that kind of stuff available. This is really just a scheduler, nothing else. You can run it each hour, and uh, the benefit about adding a schedule in this one is that you can select on which time zone you want to run it, so you're not limited to the UTC time zone as we are in Azure Functions. Another cool thing is the modules gallery. In Azure Functions, you have to type in the specific function or the specific uh, module you want and the specific version of the module you want, and it'll download that using the requirements.ps1 file. It only does that whenever you restart a host or you can pretty easily download new uh, files and folders. Um, in here, you can easily find modules from the PS gallery. So for example, we can look for MS Online and immediately click on this module and import it. Um, as you can see, you will immediately see which CMD lists are available inside of that module, so you can check if you have the right one. We already did this for the MS module, MS Online module, so we don't need to do that right now. So let's browse up to our runbooks, because as I said, there is where the power of Azure Functions or Azure Automation really lies. Um, if you uh, open your runbooks, you'll immediately see that there's a couple of tutorial runbooks that are available, a graphical runbook, a Python runbook, PowerShell runbook, and, a, uh, and that's it. Those are, are just uh, examples of how you can create scripts, and they're super useful. Use those tutorials to find out exactly how you can use Azure Automation in depth. Today, we're just going to try to execute these two. One is a PowerShell runbook, the other is a graphical runbook. Let's start editing that, shall we? When we open a graphical runbook and click on edit, you'll immediately see that it has specific drag and drop blocks, which makes automation very easy for you. These drag and drop blocks can just be uh, created um, using any type of code, and you can say, hey, or for any type of PowerShell code, and you can say exactly what steps you want to perform. A cool thing of this is that you can also just set up specific input and output parameters. If we click on input and output, we can add an input. But as you can see, we currently already have the resource group name as an input, the VM name as an input, and what our uh, connection string should be. The Azure run as connection string is the one we've uh, had in the start where we created the Azure automation runbook, and it said create a run as user or not. So if you click no there, you won't have this string available. If you click yes, then it'll be that default string. So as you can see, this is a simple graphic representation of a script and how it runs. 
If we currently click publish, it'll immediately be made available, but it won't run yet. To run it, we actually have to go to the run book and go to schedules and attach it to a schedule. We can also temporarily disable the schedule for this run book in case we ever need to do some maintenance, change the script, and we don't want it to run during. So, this currently runs every hour and the next run is scheduled at that moment. If we look at jobs, we can see how many times it's already completed. I created this a little while ago, tested it, and as you can see, it was uh, executed successfully twice. Um, if we want to run this script just once to test it or these kind of things, or to just see what happens, we can always press the start button after we've published it. Then we can enter the parameters. In this case, we're trying to start a VM, so we need the resource group. Let's call this test VM RG because that's where our VM is placed, and our VM is called test VM. If we currently click on OK, it'll immediately launch the job, start running it, and it will show you all the output, all the errors, all the warnings, and just the general logs. It'll also show you if any PowerShell exception has been found. For example, I could not find the file or I could not connect to Azure. So the graphical runbooks are very straightforward. Like I said, it's just a graphical representation of some PowerShell scripts. We also have the normal PowerShell runbook. We can click on those, and when we click on edit, you'll immediately be presented with the script. The great thing is that um, th this doesn't have directly input or output parameters, but it detects which parameters are there. And if you would try to run this script, it would ask for these per parameters uh, to be entered. So it's pretty much the same, just a less graphical representation. If you look at the script, all it does right now is try to connect to a specific resource, tries to get a VM and starts or stops it. Um, these are all very straightforward scripts. You can all, always start them uh, by hand, or you can add, click on the button, add a webhook. This actually creates uh, a way of using it in the same way that we use Azure Functions. But there are some limitations. For example, you get this very funky looking URL. It's less easily protected. It's uh, You can limit uh, specific things. Um, so there's just a lot of stuff around this uh, add a webhook feature that doesn't give you the flexibility of an Azure function. And I see that we're running out of time, so I'll wrap this up with our recap. So like I said, I prefer personally Azure Functions, but Azure Automation also is really cool. The pricing is around the same. You get 500 free automation minutes each month, and that is constantly rolled over, so you don't have to worry about running out of minutes if you just run a couple of scripts. It's also priced very well, so you'll most likely end up with the same pricing that you have in Azure Functions. There's a lot of cool ways of editing the scripts. For example, the graphical PowerShell editor is an easy way of explaining scripts to people and showing them what the power of Azure Automation is. But there are limitations, like not having storage available, not being able to uh, use the HTTPS triggering in the way that we have with our APIs when we run Azure Functions, not having uh, file-based triggering. There's a, just a lot of downsides to using Azure Automation too, and you have to balance those to what you want. So am I going to use an Azure Function or am I going to use Azure Automation? Azure Automation does have one very cool benefit, and that is that the maximum runtime is a lot higher than the 10 minutes you get by default on Azure Functions. So if you have long running scripts, I suggest to use Azure Automation. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, like, subscribe, and I'll be seeing you next time.